Hey guys, Mr. Ridgeway here with our next lesson. We got the Raging Revolution. It's about time. Uh, we we are finally to the the American War for Independence. Um, so we are, we are going to jump to it and get to it uh, right away. Um, all right. So your question here um, using the pair deck. Uh, summarize one of the two acts with text or pictures. Okay. So you can you can draw me. Um, something that you remember about the Stamp Act or the Chorus of Acts. Uh, you could drop some text, whatever you'd like to do. Okay, that's our royal question for today. Uh, once you do that, uh, here's what we are doing today. Okay, this uh, mini lesson kind of acts as a um, an accompaniment um, to the um, to the mini lesson we just ended with, uh, and we are going to be doing now the final events that are going to lead us to the American Revolution. Uh, also, we are going to be meeting some characters from it. Uh, we get to do that a little bit later in the block, and we will get to that and how you do that. Um, so go ahead uh, and get ready to check that out. All right. Uh, so uh, we are going to jump into this mini lesson. Okay, the shot heard round the world. Um, as, as Mr. Emerson himself uh, later will, will say. Okay. So again, looking at historical events, having one or multiple causes, uh, and then what are the causes of major conflicts such as wars? We have the exact same questions, and then because again, this is kind of like a part two to the one that we just did. Um, don't forget, um, also, anything that we discuss inside this mini lesson could also be totally up for grabs to your comics that are going to be due next block. Okay, so please don't forget about those. Um, Let's talk about them. The last time we met, what 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 were we, last time uh, in in the history? Okay, uh, we had just talked about the Parliament. Uh, the British had, uh, for example, they had just packed the uh, pass. Excuse me, the course of acts. The the British have had enough. Okay, um, mom and dad are not going to Disney World. They're not going to have fun. They're gonna we're gonna pull a car over, return a ground, going home. Uh, that, that is what's happening here. Okay, so Boston Harbor has been closed. Um, the Quartering Act, for example, is in place. The Quebec Act is all in place. Uh, all of these things okay, that, are, that are really, um, again, Britain taking um, things very, very seriously, which is then going to lead us uh, to what do you think, little prediction here, what do you think Americans' next action is going to be after the coercive acts? Violent? Nonviolent? I, I don't know. Give me, give me an idea. Uh, so go ahead, uh, write your response there, and then we will um, talk about actually what happens. So don't look ahead, no spoilers. Uh, tell me what uh, Americans' first action will be after the course of acts in place. Okay. All right. If you said something violent, uh, how dare you? Um, it, it, we're getting to that. Uh, but I say how dare you because Americans can also be immaculately polite. Uh, as you will soon see here, we have the meeting of the First Continental Congress. So look, um, what, what do we do when we get upset? We get together and we talk about our feelings. It's, it's an important thing um, to, to do. Uh, so, so what is the Continental Congress? Um, well, delegates get sent from all over the colonies. Uh, these are probably many people that you've heard of before. Um, getting sent to the Continental Congress um, was kind of, um, well, for the white men of property who go there um, is a very, very big deal. And what do they do? Um, they, they put together a Declaration of Rights and Grievances, which is exactly what it sounds like, saying we have these rights, uh, we have these particular grievances, and they send it to the king. Um, and they pretty much just ask him, please repeal the course of acts. Uh, we're sorry that we're jerks. Um, but then in the exact same document, um, they say, do all this, um, or we will stop importing things from Great Britain. So this is the kind of apology, uh, you would issue to your parents after having, um, wrecked the car, uh, and your parents have now grounded you and you say, um, unground me or I'll, um, you know, for example, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll burn the house down too. Uh, and so Great Britain looks at this and they're like, yeah, no, uh, they, they've had enough at this point. Okay, They reject the American demands and uh, it is all war on. Now, if you need like help understanding why this is such a big deal that 
um, when the Americans threatened to cut off all imports. Um, again, remember mercantilism, right? Uh, the colonies exist to, to economically benefit Great Britain. Um, and uh, pretty much at this point, again, the British have, have really had enough. Um, they're already sending troops over by this point and already have. Um, so uh, let's then talk about some of the first shooty shoot fight fight things that that happen okay um we, we should um do one big misnomer here about independence that a lot of um i think people when they first start sending the american revolution they they, they t we tend to think that for example like oh it's clearly about this one thing um or you know we look at we look at causes and and consequences and things like that and we, we try to find very easy simplistic answers to settle on and this is the part that's really hard um there are and i will tell you for a fact because i've been to some of these conferences um that there are historians who will very bitterly get up in front of each other and debate what the american revolution was an expression of um like you know is, is this revolution a a like an actual manifesting of the enlightenment um is it is it class conflict do we see the 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 you know is it is it like a democratic uprising or is it uh the rich merchants out for themselves or or is it not any of that at all is it britain not knowing how to keep its house clean um and its results of salutary neglect gone wrong i don't know um that's that's here i'm telling you that again history is really really complicated and all of these things can be true and they can all be wrong all at the same time. Um, the one thing that we definitely can tell though about the American Revolution from its very beginning is that the colonies were extremely conflicted about what the heck they were wanting out of it. Um, and that is independence. Um, it took literally years of negotiations between the colonies to not only agree that that was the actual goal, um, even after the first battles are getting fought. So just, and, and, and for example, like a good thing of evidence of this is that after the first battles get shot, there are Americans who like actually want to go to the king and apologize for what's happened. And they're like, okay, we can still figure this out. I know that I slapped you in the face. It's okay. I, I can explain. And there's others who are like, no, 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 no. We, 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 we slapped Great Britain in the face. You can't like, there is no turning back here. Um, and then there again there's others who were like well you know we we are fighting this but we we still want to be part of britain so it gets it's really really complicated this whole thing independence and, and we'll we'll take a look at um after the war gets fought here it becomes very obvious that once the fighting is over what was it all for um becomes a much bigger question indeed uh so uh let's talk about then what some of these early battles because they you know they're things that you should kind of generally be aware of Okay, it kind of, again, helps you kind of understand the flavor for the times. And for example, like with Paul Revere, um, if you click and watch the video, you get to break some myths that are really, really important. Okay, um, so uh, the first, I guess, actual quote unquote battle of the war where there's actual shooting is probably Lexington and Concord. Okay, uh, so what happens here, and I can show you this probably best on a map, um, is that the British are... Again, stationed here in Boston, which again has been the thorn in the, uh, you know, again, Boston's been the one doing all this really annoying behavior, right? And there are British troops in Boston, and they know that there are colonial leaders out there who are responsible for some of these shenanigans. Uh, and then not only that, uh, they also know that um, as the, um, the rebels or uh, as some people prefer to call them, uh, patriots, are uh, starting to um, get organized, that they're also getting guns and things like that. So the British decide that they are going to march um, out here, okay, to Concord, which is over here, um, and they are going to, um, for example, um, after having gone through Lexington, which is another town right here, they're going to try to capture some colonial leaders that they think are out there, um, and then they're also going to try to um, take some powder and other kind of guns and cannons and things like that and either destroy them or, um, if, you know, if possible, um, take them uh, for themselves. 
Uh, and the, the British do find some of those things. Um, you, you can see here that they, they, they do the whole marchy march out here pretty successfully. Um, but then, uh, again, you'll hear about this in the Adam Ruins Everything video, that thanks to, um, well, not too much uh, Paul Revere, but some the efforts of lots of other individuals, uh, word gets spread to all the militia that are in all of the different towns and you know different houses that are along their way. And basically what happens is as the British um, run, go, they go through Lexington uh, and there's a, like, a, a very, very small battle that actually happens there. Somebody shoots, we don't know who shot first uh, in, in, in there, but that was technically where the first shots were fired in the revolution. And then there's a whole bunch more battles that happen um, here at Concord. From that point on, the British retreat, and you can see all these like little yellow like explosions um, out on that. And that is where basically Minutemen, who are these volunteer, non-professional, they would be ready in a minute, quote unquote, um, American militia are showing up and just shooting at them um, in very non-professional, non-organized um, fighting ways. But it's extremely effective because they just bleed the British all the way back to Boston. And so famously, this is where, um, again, the first shots of the revolution are going to happen. So there you go. Um, and then at this point, like it, it becomes very evident what, what direction things are going in terms of, uh, is this going to be violent or not? It is definitely going to be violent. Um, so go ahead and answer this question on Pear Deck. What was something you learned from the Adam Ruins Everything video that confirmed or challenged what you knew about Paul Revere? Now, once you've done that, I will tell you about the last battle, um, that you probably just, again, need to be generally aware of, um, in, ter in terms of just early battles and knowing what they're going to mean for, you know, uh, other things. Um, so the other notable first shot is probably Bunker Hill, or as it probably should be more accurately known, Breed's Hill. Um, this is a little, so again, Boston was a peninsula at this time. Um, and then another part, there's another peninsula just north of Boston. Um, again, if, if you haven't been, uh, Boston is surrounded by water and it, it's kind of a, a, a feature of it. Um, well, there's this hill right here that was on another peninsula, and that is uh, Breed slash Bunker Hill right there. And what happens is that after the British um, hike it on back to Boston, after getting shut up um, in Lexington and Concord, is Minutemen start to fortify the hills here. Um, and they do it rather quickly. And by fortify, I mean like they're starting to build trenches, they're starting to um, perhaps get cannon up there, and that would be a threat to the British in Boston. And so the British decide that they are going to get rid of the Minutemen that are starting to organize there. Um, and so uh, forces under um, the, the British general's name is Howe, uh, they decide, um, well, th there's a bunch of disagreement between the British generals as to what they should do. But they decide that, of course, the best way to take the hill back is to, um, uh, of course, go straight up it, uh, which is it's about 120 or so feet um, in, in terms of elevation. I mean, I've been to it. It's steep. Uh, and so they, they decide to charge up it, um, and it, it don't go so well for, for the home team, meaning the British here. Um, they It's... It's a really, really disorganized mess. They were trying to do a whole bunch of very fancy flanking maneuvers out the side, and that doesn't work. Um, and I, I can tell you more about this. I don't want to bore you too much, but um, you know, keeping battle lines is really hard. Like a lot of the British companies that try to go up, like the fur, like these these charges up Breed's Hill. Like if there's 20 men in a company, um, they will they'll lose like 16 of the 20 and actually a lot of British officers are killed here um, in this particular battle. It's it's pretty bloody. Um, and after doing it the second time, they fail. The third time they try and they finally break it. Uh, and by that point, uh, most of the Americans have either left because um, it's frankly put, um, keeping militia organized is really hard. Um, a lot of them just didn't wanna fight anymore and they had left by this point. Uh, and then the other thing that had happened is that most of the Americans were simply out of ammo at this point. Um, and so then they take the hill. Now they suffered to, uh, roughly about two and a half times as many casualties as Americans. But what is what does the whole Bunker Hill, Breed's Hill thing uh, prove? Well, number one, I guess we can say that it proves that the war is going to be 
bloody, it's going to be costly, it's going to take a lot of just time. Um, it, it's not, the Americans are not going to simply, um, I guess, break rank as soon as the British show up. Um, they, they are going to be a more, I don't know, fearsome fighting force than the British had assumed. So that, that is kind of what we can gain from Bunker Breeds Hill. All right. Um, last thing to note is the numbers on each side, and this is also really important because, again, it's not as clear-cut as a lot of people assume. Um, we, we have different labels and different names for the groups of people who supported different sides. So loyalists uh, who supported the crown, we think that's anywhere um, from about 15 to 20% of white males. Uh, rebels or patriots, depending on your perspective, uh, was about 50% of white males. And then about 30% of the colonists are going to stay neutral or switch sides depending on how events go. They're the bandwagon or the kind of people who kind of like just like sit back and watch how, you know, which side should I root for? Um, but many factors are going to, uh, as you're going to see, are going to affect people's choices of sides. It's going to deal with, you know, what their religious backgrounds are, their income levels are. Are they financially tied to the British in any way? Um, you know, what's what's their regional, like, you know, that they're from, um, you know, different uh, ethnicities are going to have, obviously, uh, as you're going to see here, very different attitudes about uh, whether or not the British are on the right side or not. Um, so there you go. Uh, now, to, to end off here, a, with one minute, um, write the most important thing that you got out of today's lesson. So do that on Pear Deck. And once you do that, I'll tell you about the final little activity that you have to do. And you will turn this in for homework, um, but it's, it's turned in uh, inside Padlet itself. And what is that? Um, I'd like you to meet uh, one of the people, one of the characters from the American Revolution. Um, so uh, you're going to pick one of them, and then you're going to summarize them to the class with Padlet. Uh, here's what I'd like you to do um, with these characters. Again, make sure you put your first and last name so that I can give you credit on the Padlet itself. Um, tell us a few key details about that person's life. Like, Let us know what we need to know. Um, and then besides that, tell us why this person is significant or worth knowing. Like what's, what's about their story that makes them distinctive and kind of cool. Um, so you can see here, we've got a good variety of characters, 10 for you to pick from. I highly encourage you to watch the Drunk History episode that is on Deborah Sampson, um, regardless of which one you go with. It's great and awesome. Please don't all pick Deborah Sampson. She's cool, but there is uh, other people here that you should know. Um, and then right here, you can see on the padlets which you respond. Um, I, I will give you the briefest of intros so you might know who you want to pick. Uh, General Cornwallis, that's going to be the Washington for the British. Uh, that, that's, that's that dude, kind of an interesting guy. Um, Baron von Steuben, uh, that is a Prussian military officer um, who comes over and it, he's kind of like, again, Prussia's like early Germany uh, for those who don't know. He, he, he's going to come over and he's going to, um, for example, like a Valley Forge and other places, he's going to train American soldiers how to drill. And this is a really, really important thing at that time because, again, America, even though they have people like Washington and stuff like that, they're not like the most organized formal fighting force. Um, von Steuben also likely um, is the first... So as we uh, most historians can probably tease out that he was um, openly somewhat gay, uh, it, it's hard to determine. So he's an interesting guy. Um, Boston King, um, slave that is going to help the British. It's very interesting. Um, George Washington, don't need much introduction on him. Joseph Brandt, um, Native American, he's going to help the British against the colonists. Um, George Rogers Clark, if you've ever heard of Vincennes, Indiana, he does a bunch of fighting out there um, for the colonists. Benedict Arnold, the most famous, uh, or should I say infamous, trader in U.S. history. You can find out why he switches sides. It's kind of an interesting story. Um, Francis Marion, if you've seen the movie The Patriot, that movie is very loosely based on this dude's life. He was called the Swamp Fox uh, because of how he attacked the British. Um... The Marquis de Lafayette, uh, who is in Hamilton. You could check him out. He's a French uh, soldier who's very interesting. And then again, Deborah Sampson, uh, who is a woman who dresses up as a man to fight in the revolution for the colonists. Uh, and again, there's a Drunk History episode in here, and I recommend you watch it regardless of who, who you want to go with because it's pretty great. Um, so the Padlet's right here. Okay, You just click on it. You do it. 
And then again, don't forget to put your first and last names that way I can give you credit. Okay, um, other reminders outside of that, uh, just please remember um, that you need to do the Padlet. That's what I'm taking um, for like, you know, for the grade for this particular lesson that you actually got to know one of our, our characters here. Um, second, uh, make sure you're keeping up with Honor and Slavery. Uh, chapter five of that is gonna be due very, very soon. Um, I believe in two blocks from now. Um, let's see, your comic is gonna be due next block. Okay, uh, so don't forget to get that to me um, digitally or otherwise um, next block. And then upcoming next week, we have a unit two quiz. Uh, so just on the lessons that we've done so far in unit two on the American Revolution and Great Awakening, Enlightenment, that kind of stuff, just be aware that is coming next week. So other than that, um, I will see you guys in the next lesson. Bye-bye.